Hello everyone, welcome back to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi and I'm very happy to talk to you today about astrology. So I would like to talk specifically about a significant transit that has been affecting the energy, the collective energy, in a rather more negative light since it began. So a lot of you maybe know that um, since the 6th of May 2020, we've been having a nodal shift. Basically, the, those imaginary points on the moon's elliptic as it orbits around the earth, the south node and the north node have shifted from Cancer and Capricorn to the Gemini and Sagittarius axis. So at the moment we are having the north node in Gemini versus the south node in Sagittarius transit. And this is significant due to a number of reasons which are mostly connected to what these two signs are ruling. So we are having at the moment to turn our attention almost obsessively towards things that are Mercury ruled or Gemini based. So that would be news. Um, um, an obsession with socializing, um, exchanging information, finding out a lot of facts, details, mm, potential, an increasing gossip, uh, an increase in fake news versus letting go of a lot of things that are ruled by Sagittarius or are Jupiter based. So that would be optimism, having faith having a strong moral code, um, a religious um, understanding of the world, um, finding the truth, seeking meaning in life, and optimism. So as you can see already, there is a, a bit of a weird shift in the collective where we are being pushed towards having a more practical-based, realistic, and slightly pessimistic approach to life, whereas we need to let go of optimism faith and to a large extent having fun. So there is here this tension in the sky at the moment that might be bringing a lot of us down. In addition, we also have the influence of Saturn in Aquarius that is making um, the whole collective rise up to a lot of social injustices. It's exposing a lot of mistakes in the relationship that traditional institutions, which are governed at the moment by the very powerful influence of Pluto and Capricorn, how these religious institutions and traditional institutions are actually relating to the masses. Okay, so there is this tension between the collective is split, is divided, a lot of us are isolated, a lot of us are sick, we're having to deal with a lot of changes in our lives. Institutions are very powerful, but they're also domineering, they hide a lot of things from us, we don't really know what's been happening from a number of things behind the, the doors, right, so to say. And at the same time, with the nodal shift at the moment, with all of this energy flooding into the sign of Gemini, in addition, we're also going to be having a Mercury retrograde in Gemini, and we're having at the moment a Venus retrograde in Gemini. So there's a lot of energy being poured into, and here I would like to like make an imaginary point for the North Node in Gemini. There's a lot of energy being poured in the sign of Gemini at the moment. And... If you are an air sign, you might be feeling that this energy is somehow revving you up. It's like giving you um, a new boost or it's helping you achieve a lot of projects. But if you are an earth sign or a water sign at the moment, you might be experiencing a lot of uncertainty. You might be feeling as if there aren't many palpable things that you can touch and grasp and hold on to. It feels collectively as if things are shifting, they are moving into a new direction. We don't know the direction. Neptune is in Pisces, so there is a gigantic fog surrounding what the ne next steps forwards are. So it's very tricky because it's, you can't, sorry, because on one hand, you can't rely on um, what authorities are saying. Authorities are being exposed at the moment for the abuse that they've been dishing out onto the masses. You can't actually follow through with the news and the facts you are hearing because a lot of them might be fake. A lot of them might just be hearsay. A lot of them could just be fabricated opinions meant to boost internet clicks or to get likes and views and, you know, um, 
push a publication or a blog or a website towards gathering more attention and thereby earning more income and revenue from the clicks. So what are we left with? We cannot trust institutions. We are having a more pessimistic mindset. We're seeing all these mistakes being exposed. As a collective, we are divided. Also economically, capitalism has been teaching us to, to pour a lot into our own individual self-achievement. And we don't have that much this collective spirit of coming together um, or the energy is being slowly drained from these um, collective groupings and initiatives. However, there is also the resistance. Okay, so I'm not being completely pessimistic about this aspect. There is also a mass resistance and we see what's been happening at the moment with people taking to the streets, rioting, other people starting businesses that help others um, navigate these transitions, right? We see an increase in counselors, in astrologers, in tarot readers, in um, people that just deliver a lot of goods or information that is needed at uh, specific moments and especially in places that have been isolated due to the current pandemic. So there is hope, but there is despair. Yeah, there is a lack of faith and a lack of optimism towards the future. And at the same time, there is a lot of fake news. There is a lot of hearsay. We don't really know how to navigate this landscape. And this might be creating a lot of uncertainty within us. It's really important to stand true to yourself, stand true to your own projects, stand true to your own morals and stand true to your own um, worldview. OK, um, this is why I've prepared some very quick tips to help you navigate the current transit. OK, so tip number one, I have my laptop here, so I just want to look at my notes. Tip number one. Don't take things to heart. It's really, really important in this period when there will be a lot of news, a lot of bits of information, a lot of um, contradicting facts, even from established institutions such as university research, for example, at the moment on the COVID epidemic from researchers in Holland could differ from what researchers in America are actually doing or researchers in Delhi. Right. So. You have a lot of competing facts, competing arguments rising up to the surface, what to believe, whom to trust. Whatever you do during this period, if you engage in a debate, polemics are going to arise. OK, a lot of arguments, a lot of people wanting to hold to their truth, to not back down. OK, they think or we are going to all actually have these arguments at one point or another where we think that what we say is the truth. OK, but we are being asked to let go of this collective truth. So don't take things to heart. Have a conversation and agree to disagree if you cannot reach a consensus. And please keep in mind during this eclipse period, all the way up until Leo season in August, we are going to have arguments that will not reach conclusions. We're just going to leave them up in the air. And that's the whole point of it. Communicate, express yourself, because this will help you understand what you need to do in your life, not based on what other people say, but based on what it is that you truly believe. So the polemic is not meant to help you win an argument. We're asked to let go of winning. What the polemic will do is teach you what it is important for yourself, what it is you truly believe in, what will you defend and what would you stand up for? So don't take things to heart, but use conversations to help you clarify what it is you really want, not to convince the other person of your truth. Tip number two, it's going to be increasingly difficult to be yourself. You might want to conform. When uncertainty knocks on your door, you feel that there is strength in numbers. So you want to be like other people because you don't know what's happening. We're changing, right? The world is changing. Wrong. During this period, Saturn in Aquarius is testing us how authentic we are, how unique we are. It's really, really important to not back down. If you were feeling like an outcast, if you were feeling like a freak, like you were always strange, like you're not fitting in and you constructed your life around down uh, around that, please don't back down now. It's really, really important that you overcome whatever limits and obstacles people are placing on you. Fly your freak flag proud okay you are unique you are different and no you will not be destroyed in this process if you stand on your own 
it will be harder to fit in with the group's needs, mostly because a lot of us don't really know what they want. And if we are having this um, security um, blanket pulled up from underneath our feet at the moment with what is happening economically and what is happening from the point of view of uh, reforming educational institutions and, you know, even medicine and health and police work and politics, we're, we're actually changing a lot of things at the moment, guys. Okay, so during this process, you might feel a lot of uncertainty and you might feel that it will be safer for you to just give up on your authentic self, stop being so weird and conform to the needs of the group. But no, I am here to encourage you to stand in your uniqueness, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much other people talk behind your back or gossip or make fun of you, you are unique and you are special. Please, the world needs your special gifts and we are moving towards an age that will be much more tolerant and accepting of your uniqueness. Tip number three, help others. Okay, you might be feeling uh, blocked or your ego might be hurt. We are having Chiron in Aries at the moment, wounds related to being ourselves, okay? So you will be tested in how much you actually love yourself and how much, how brave you are to express who you really are. But it's really, really important to counteract this negativity by doing something good, by helping others. And you can help others even with kind words. Now, choose the people you help. Please don't give to people that are toxic. Don't give to those people that make fun of you, that demean you and disrespect you. Give to those people that are genuinely struggling in this period. Even if it's a three pound donation to a charity that you love, even if it's a kind word or a really lovely comment, you know, on somebody's page, make somebody's day by giving them a boost of oxytocin, of support, of I care for you, I am there. These words are gold during this period, okay? So help other people in whichever way is possible. It's going to help you and it's going to help the other person and together we won't feel so alone and negative and bogged down, okay? And finally, check the facts. Last tip, it's really, really important that you know um, when you turn to other people for advice, check that those people are genuinely who they say that they are. If you go to a tarot reader, if you go to an astrologer as well, make sure that you know a little bit about that person's background, okay? If a person is too elusive, if a person is hiding a lot of things, then I wouldn't put my trust in that person. Again, this is really, really important as well, not to put your trust in a lot of people, right? It's really important to follow your own intuition. At the same time, feel free to explore other opinions and advice, but please don't have this trigger reaction where somebody says something and you feel uncertain, so therefore you think that what that person has said is the truth, and you quickly take that person's advice and you apply it to your life with disastrous consequences. No, we are being asked to let go of traditional established belief systems and to think for ourselves. Gemini, the higher vibration of Gemini is independent thinking, okay? So the lower vibration of Gemini is gossip and um, backstabbing or like talking bad about people's uniqueness and then actually destroying their reputation because of that. So let's vibe high, guys, in the higher vibration of Mercury, the higher vibration of Gemini, independent thinkers, rebellious in our attitudes towards how we understand the social world, but also through our own rebelliousness and through our uniqueness and our freakiness, we help liberate other people, other of us that have been shackled by the demands of gender norms, traditional norms, religious norms, societal and cultural norms, racial norms, all sorts of preconceived knowledge that tells us that we need to love only a certain group of people. We need to earn money only in a certain way. You need to express yourself and love only certain professions. And you have to be very careful about how others perceive you, okay? Um, we're slowly dismantling this understanding of social status, of wealth, of power in the world since Pluto has entered Capricorn in 2008. And now it's reaching its zenith because Pluto is nearing its final degrees and it's finally going to enter Aquarius in 2023. So, 
increasingly more energy is going to go towards those freaky of us, okay? So if it feels different right now, just so you know, these are just some obstacles placed in your way to help you understand how strong do you want to reconfirm to the world that this is who you are and you love me or you leave me. I am still going to prevail. Okay, guys, so I hope this gave you some encouragement. I hope this gave you some inspiration. I generally just want to inspire you and make you feel good during this really heavy transitional period, okay? But we are nearing something better, so keep that in mind. We are not going backwards, we're going forwards, and what comes is better than what came before. I love you so much. Take great care of yourselves, and yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys think.